Good evening, everyone. How is everybody doing? Let me know when you can hear me. We'll wait till everyone gets in. Right, good evening, guys. It looks like we are live on YouTube, which is awesome. How is everyone? Let me know if you guys can hear me, if we're live on YouTube. Perfect. How are we all? How's everyone doing? Evening, evening. We've got Daniel, Jalpa, how's it going? Peter, Stanley. How are we all? Evening. It's been a it's been a very busy week, that's for sure. How's everyone's week been? We'll give it a couple of minutes till everybody gets in the room. We've got a few things to talk about. Good to see you all here. Good stuff, good stuff. Yeah, I'm really good, thank you. It's been a it's been a very, very fast paced week. I can't believe it's Friday already. Markets have been shifting as well. I'm, I'm really excited for this one because we've got quite a few things to talk about and there's the top three pairs that I want to really push out there, but I think there's a few more. There's a lot of movement now. So we're getting a nice shift in the market. It's taken a while, a bit slower than normal for the first period of the year. However, it's uh, it's shifting nicely. I'm good, thank you. I'm really good. Great to see you all here. Where are you all tuning in from? currently in a new new environment you guys won't be able to see too much here but we will reveal that we've got an episode coming just on that good evening henry how's it going mohammed how are we yeah next week looks super solid there's been a few moves i'm currently in usd cad at long at the moment I missed a couple of trades this week, but next week look even better. South Africa, Somalia, nice. Welcome, guys. Who's read the book, The War of Art, by the way? You've probably heard of, you know, Art of War, but who's read War of Art, just out of interest? South Africans in the house. Joseph, how's it going? Yeah, I'm good. I'm really good, thank you. Poland, awesome. Somalia again. Detroit, nice, welcome. Break even on pound CAD. Yeah, I did I missed pound CAD, but it would have been a break even anyway. Because I would have gone in with the risk entry, but just missed it. Dollar yen in dollar CAD taken out from pound CAD for one percent. Switzerland, Kenya, Somalia. Awesome. We'll give it one more minute before we just jump in. We'll jump into the charts. A couple of really important things I want to talk about, things that we're announcing, and also something that, that is very, very practical that most people don't fully understand or commit to that's going to help so much in your trading that I want you to reverse engineer for yourself, but I'm going to give you the blueprint and the kind of structure to go and figure that out. I think it's one of the most important things that will assist you in your trading, regardless of how you trade. This is a must if you really want to be serious in this game for the long run. All right, we're getting more people in. In dollar CAD, we'll hold over the weekend, same as me. Nice one, Jalpa. Break even on the pound CAD as well. Yeah, it, it would have been exactly the same for myself. Got the cold shower in. Awesome. How long have you been doing that now? How long have you kept it up? You're in a dollar waiting for the buy. Yeah, we'll we'll get into that. Good stuff. I'm looking forward to covering these pairs. That's for sure. 
I didn't take Cad Yen. I didn't, but the, the shift is here now, so I wouldn't worry so much about trades if you thought if you think that you've missed them. It's literally just begun, and we've now broken the significant highs. There's a few things that went higher than than I anticipated, but it is what it is. That this is not a game of right and wrong. There's no ego involved in this. If it does, it does. You know, you just take messages from the market and you adapt accordingly. That's actually what is going to keep you here. Three weeks. That's solid. It's easy for people to do this for a couple of days and then and then give up with that. So, three weeks is uh, on road to being being a solid habit. Twice a day. That's sick. Mr. Dollar Cad, the flag looked a bit too big for me. Was looking for more development. The the dollar cad trade was pretty nice in in the form of the fifteen on the one hour didn't look that great you had to filter it on the fifteen that that was the real key thing for me right so it looks like we got everybody in the room firstly hope you've all had a great week you can see that shift that we've seen in the markets over the last couple of days which is very nice indeed it was only a matter of time till that happens that that looks like that will continue especially if we can get some real trending environments that's going to be even better. So the news that we have been talking about is that you can probably see, well, kind of see behind me, we're in a bit of a different environment. So I have moved my office over to this area, which is now a studio. So yes, we've been creating a Falcon studio, which we're really excited about. This is one element of it. You, you can't see hardly any of it. So I'm going to do a full tour of that in another episode and you'll see exactly what we've got here. We're really excited for this studio because what it's going to be able to bring to to the channel and it's going to give so much more flexibility the type of content that we produce the type of help it is so for those of you that have been tuning into the channel you know on a regular basis you're going to be even more wild with the content that we've got coming in the works one of my most favorite things which is more of a interview podcast style things is interviewing our students especially this year will probably be the biggest amount of growth that we've seen in falcon and people's lives are going to change financially and it's going to be super cool to capture that raw time frame and that raw essentially journey from a student of where they are to how they've changed their life what kind of because it's not always going to be smooth right there are going to be struggles throughout that but that's going to be really cool to capture so that's one of the most exciting things so we've got a studio set up to my right you won't be able to see it so i'll go through all of that and yeah it was it was really fun setting this up you know i've moved this over to here so we've got a big space to do lots of different things my trading setup is here as well which is an even more inspiring space than i had before so i'm very 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 happy with that so that is it for the studio side of things so like i said you'll see a separate episode where we'll kind of walk you through it take you through the studio i think you'll really enjoy it and the type of content that will be produced in it will just be next level so i'm really looking forward to that so that is the studio side of things and also we have a psychology youtube st series coming so for those of you that are asking us a lot about psychology now i appreciate not every single person tuning into this you know this live right now or tuning into the falcon youtube on a regular basis you might trade something slightly different you might have a a similar style to us but you come to the channel because you're getting value in many different ways whether it be mindset or a few technical tips here and there and that's awesome but what we want to dive a lot deeper into is psychology. So psychology is going to be the next wave of what we do. We've actually been working on something for two years in psychology. And we have that coming out very soon, which we're looking about four, four to six weeks, more towards the six weeks. But who knows, we may have that out earlier and that will be available to that will be available to everyone available to it doesn't matter how you trade. It's going to be there for you. The impact that we want to leave on the world is is not just about how we trade but psychology goes so much deeper in that the amount of messages that we get on a regular basis that you know some of you have great strategies you do well you might trade slightly different to us and you're performing very very well but what holds you back getting to that next level is your psychology so rather than changing what you're doing because i don't believe to change something if, if you're technically already good and you're doing well then you don't necessarily have to trade exactly how we trade because you're already performing you know it's not the only strategy in the world that's going to work however if you have not got your psychology in the right spot then that will always hold you back you know that will always do that because the reality is this guys you can have somebody who has an average mindset right a really really average mindset who's not developed on their psychology 
but they're trading a system that might be able to yield them some fantastic returns, for example. It doesn't matter how good your strategy is at this point. If you don't have your right mindset, then it doesn't matter anyway. It does not matter if you can make 100% per month. If you haven't got your psychology in place, it doesn't matter. It's almost useless because you'll find a way to mess it up. And psychologically, you just won't be in the mental framework that you need to sustain that and actually overcome that, whether that be fear, greed, anxiety, hesitation. So just remember that it's never about strategy because you can have the best one in the world. And if your mindset's not right, you'll fail anyway. So you may as well work on your psychology to set yourself up to win. Very, very important. So like I said, we've got a psychology series coming here on YouTube. So keep your eyes peeled for that and we will give you more insight to the rest of it. All right, guys, let me just keep up with the chat. I'll do my best to answer as many of these questions as possible. So with the psychology, we'll just be going deep into the root of what the main issues are. Most people think, right, it's FOMO, right? They think, oh, as long as I can overcome FOMO, then I'll be good. You know, don't worry about anything else. As long as I can overcome FOMO, that's all I need, or I need to overcome on a losing streak, and that's how I'm gonna win. Most people don't actually understand what their psychological issues are. And when you present it to them, they, there's always a bit of friction because there's ego involved here. There's self-esteem that holds you back, probably more than that. So. I want to get right to the root of that and then rip that root out, show you the blueprint so then you can build yourself up to be the best trader that you can actually be because that's what's going to actually yield you the best returns, not your strategy alone. So I'm looking forward to that. So that is that side of things. But let's get into it. Let's get into the charts. Firstly, what are the main pairs that you guys and girls are focusing on right now? I'm seeing a tremendous shift in the market right now. Things that we will focus on in Falcon for the weeks to come. I just wanted to give you a bit of a glimpse into that first one being pound yen. Curious to hear your guys' thoughts. All right, what do you guys think on pound yen, especially for next week as we you know, come to the weekly close? Curious to hear what you think about the price action that we're seeing here. Did anybody take a trade on, on GJ by any chance? Lewis, how's it going? Euro sterling is bullish next week. That one's looking interesting, that's for sure. Do you normally look at the yen basket when taking yen pairs like you do with the DXY? Uh, not so much, to be honest, because we just trade them on its own merit. I mean, you can correlate quite a lot of things. If we're going to go risk on risk off, then, of course, when you see equity sell off and you see things like S&P sell off, right? US 30, we've seen oh, there was a lovely trade in the US 30. Unfortunately, it didn't capture it, didn't capture it but that is as far as it really goes. You know, it's, and it's not to say that's wrong, by the way. We just generally don't do that. So if you find that it assists you and it gives you an insight and it doesn't hold you back because you're trying to correlate too many things and all the power to it. Good stuff, good stuff. Awesome, right, so pound yen. Top three, top three that I really want you guys and girls to focus on is these two pound pairs. So pound yen and pound dollar, I believe will yield tremendous potential for the weeks to come and especially for March as well. Pound yen and pound dollar in some very valuable areas. They pushed a little bit higher than we was anticipating. But again, we're not attached to a particular area. We was looking for pound yen to sell off around these sort of areas. But we didn't really get the slowdown in momentum that we was looking for. So no trade. You know, the way that we see it is that if you're looking for an area that we're looking to buy or sell, whether it goes from there or not, it really doesn't matter. That's where people get too caught up. Again, this just goes back to the psychology that I want to uncover. Some people are so focused on wanting to call the trade versus actually making money out of the trade in the first place. Just because you can call the direction doesn't mean you can make money out of it. If you've not got your psychology in place, then you're shafted in the first place. So becoming more neutral is going to be your best friend in this game. But looking at pound yen on the daily, we had a lovely closure here in the right area. So if we go back to the weekly there. That area there, and it looks like how we're finishing on the weekly. We're not over just yet, but I mean, we're very close. This to me looks like a premature pattern that we would look for for a lovely sell-off. We're looking for an impulsive wave on pound yen to the downside. That still makes sense. It made sense the last time when we was looking at it. So daily chart, if you remember, we was looking at this and this gives you a repeat behavior. So we just take it back to there. Same thing. So what, what did we recommend the last time? We was looking at pound yen around here. We was looking for a sell-off. We didn't get the sell-off. We moved up a little bit higher. 
people panic they get caught off guard they think right well this is going to the moon you know this is going to the upside here and then what happens it comes crashing down and it gets people caught on the wrong side again so this is nothing new really L look at the same behavior that we're seeing breaks the high gets people caught sells off so essentially what we're looking for guys is the same thing so we're looking for that behavior on a slightly bigger scale right and it looks like we've got it so until we get that confirmation which is very very early signs we're looking for that wave lower so looking forward to taking advantage of that indices we do for sure i trade them for sure so we trade we trade all types of instruments even all the way up to crypto crypto is not the most popular one that's you know i've been testing some things for a good couple of years now and we are going to introduce a few things on stocks as well so it's a new little bit of announcement i originally started off with stocks so stocks has always been quite close to my heart however i do believe that if you've got too many things to focus on sometimes that can be, that can actually hinder someone's trading which is why we don't recommend everybody that jumps into falcon trade gold trade indices trade this trade that it's just too much you don't need lots of different things to do well you know sometimes having too much takes your focus away it really depends what stage you are in at your journey and your level of trading for someone who's got a bit of experience who's got their plan sort of mastered it's very easy to add in gold silver copper you know soybean and all these different instruments that's fine but if you're not equipped yet just focus on the basics get really good at the basics that's what's going to help you there's no rush to want to capitalize on these moves because guess what the market's always providing opportunity and that's the mindset you need to be in so pound yen looking for downside we're expecting this impulsive wave we're getting early signs of confirmation on that so at falcon we'll know how to trade it again nothing just yet ideally if you're looking for a sense of direction we've already cleared this area once we push to the downside here and we get some strong movements we'll be looking for particular entry points that we look at for this wave lower it's and keeping it as simple as that so let's say for example you have your own strategy and you're looking to trade pound yen just keep it simple don't overcomplicate it however you're looking to enter we're looking for sales it's really just that simple so that is something to focus on for the weeks and month to come I believe pound dollar will be a similar sort of pattern let's go to the weekly All right who's got pound dollar on watch or had it on watch for this week we got welcome guys welcome everybody joining us so we'll be looking at something very very similar here with pound dollar impulsive wave again if we just strip this all back because some of you that don't trade our style won't, won't even know what was going on here, right? If you just strip it all back and look at it in its simplicity, the only thing that is on my mind is this. If you just look at the simplicity of breaking the low, I showed this on YouTube before, right? We break the low, we move to the upside. We achieve this move that was expected all the way from up here, and we're very close here. So if you look at it in that simplicity, it's either two things that we're seeing. At Falcon, we look at patterns, right? So what you have with patterns, if you, if you don't already know this, when you learn simple patterns, you'll see things like, right, that's an ascending channel, right? Ascending channel, like that. That's very basic, ascending channel and then descending channel. I'm sure a lot of you could just relate and think, right, so if there's an ascending channel, I'm looking for a sell. If there's a descending channel, I'm looking for a buy. You know, it's very basic, right? However, have you heard of anything called extension of patterns? So this is something that I developed myself, right? I'm not gonna, you're not gonna find it in any book, patterns within patterns, these type of things. This is my own data. This is putting in the work and having the experience to understand how to do that. So what I figured out after many, many years of testing is that patterns are just not picture perfect of what you see. So you don't just look at a typical chart pattern and see, right, this is an expanding pattern. So then it should behave X, Y, and Z. It should just do exactly that. The reality in the market is that you look for picture perfect and guess what it doesn't happen so i started to see these extensions of patterns so the way that i see pound dollar right now is in two ways breaking the low typical psychology we saw that we moved to the upside so this is where traders are trapped this is where most of retail is trapped on the wrong side of the market before it moves to the upside where will it be again it'll be at these highs so retail will be trapped here where most people lose again this is what we talk about when we're speaking about mass psychology that is what that is most people they're looking for learning how how do the institutions trade what do they do and all these type of things in its simplicity we're doing the same thing anyway we're just not overcomplicating it we are figuring out where are the, 
the people that are getting caught off guard most of the time where it's in these areas in these areas so what reoccurring themes do we see to be able to take advantage of it it's that simple so for right now pound dollar extension or just about to break and catch people on the wrong side either one that we're happy with i personally wouldn't be interested in entertaining any buys at this stage especially here it's just too short term yes in the very short term you might be able to go to the the one hour the 15 maybe even the five minute depending on how you trade and find a short term move where you think right but i took a buy for 50 pips if that's your strategy fair enough and if you feel that you can scale that up all the power to you however you have to think about the bigger picture for the longer term so we'll be waiting for a nice little sell-off on pound dollar i'm gonna mark one of them as a missed trade it's a it's more of a valid position which i'll cover in the recaps for falcon but there was an area that I was looking at around here and we had that kind of slanted head and shoulders before we had the sell-off. It was a really, really simple entry. But I just, you know, I took my off and the ball on that one. No one's perfect. So that is it for pound dollar, but expect an impulsive wave. Whether it's from this area here, which I think is more likely based off of the price action that we're seeing just here alone. All right. It's looking really, really good. This is asking for a sell-off. So we'll see how that plays out anyway. So that's pound dollar. And last one out of the top three that I want to recommend is Cad Yen. Look how beautiful Cad Yen is. What do you guys think about Cad Yen? Oh, the question's over to you guys. What do you think about Cad Yen for next week? I'm 14 and I just started trading now. Should I start trading now when I'm older? If you're 14, that's a... By the way, let me know in the chat what you guys think about that, by the way. Would you have started trading at 14? Did you know about trading when you were 14? Firstly brilliant age any age the the earlier the better what i would say is that if you're starting off young then don't don't focus uh, and this is for anyone really but don't focus anything to do with returns or making money because at that stage you're not going to have a trading account anyway and even if you did get one in you know your dad's name which some people have done which uh, i'm not going to recommend but however you do what you need to do to get it done just learn just focus on learning build your self-esteem build your psychology Remember, like I said, it's not about strategy because you could be a 14-year-old or 15-year-old kid and in a year, you, you've got the brains to be able to learn a strategy, right? You could learn the Falcon strategy, for example. Does it mean that you could then go and execute on that if someone said, fair enough, right, 15-year-old 15, 15 you, here's 100,000 pounds, here's a quarter of a million pounds, just go and trade it. And then suddenly all these emotional issues come up because you're only 14, you're only 15 and that's not your fault. You've not done anything wrong. Right, so I would focus more on just gaining the skill set and really start reading up on mindset. Develop yourself, you know, find who you are as a person. That's going to help you a lot with your trading. Take any trades this week. Only dollar CAD. I'm, Mark, I missed pound CAD, but that would have been a break even anyway. For those took it on the break of the reduced entry, probably would have stayed in. Lovely trade. Pound dollar, I could kind of, like I said, I can kind of call that as a missed trade. But yeah, just dollar CAD for the continuation up. So I'm looking forward to next week. We've got a nice shift on quite a few pairs. So it's uh it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun live webinar, that's for sure. Defo would advise my inner child to subscribe to Falcon at 13 years old. Love that sir hat. That's that's awesome. Well, you know what having a good people around you is uh is one of the most important things on your journey on the way up as well. So uh Cad Yen, Cad Yen to the downside. So keeping that simple again stripping it all back for those of you that follow things like let's say call it resistance by the way look it's not that there is no support or resistance in the market right remember that and because i think some people get it confused they say right why does falcon not like support and resistance not that we don't like resistance there's resistance a double top is resistance a double bottom is resistance however we're just not interested in it going all the way through as to this bit of price is no longer relevant to this bit of price that's the only difference we're just looking at the pattern the structure of the market in its most relevant form because when you test and test and test and you really get into it and you're really granular with it you might see it reject off of here and here a few times but these are just minor areas that are not as important as what you might think so for simplicity reasons this is just what works for us so if you found a way it works and you got high strike rate and you found a way to make it happen perfect if you're finding that you're just taking any support or resistance and that's holding you back, then maybe you want to add a few more things in or look into pattern identification to assist you, gives you more structure to it. So for CAD Yen in its simplest form, rejected here, nice little wick to catch people on the wrong side and then we're looking for the sell-off. So again, 
direction is one thing. Do you have a management system and a strategy to be able to capitalize on CAD Yen from here to here? Will you know how to scale into the market when it presents itself? Or will you just think, well, if CAD Yen's gonna move from here to here, any opportunity that I think I can sell, I'll just sell. Well, that's not a strategy, that's just gambling. So that's what we'll be looking at for CAD Yen. Looks like we'll get the shift very soon. Lovely daily close. If we can close anywhere like this, bearing in mind that weekly that we just looked at, this looks like a very typical pattern that happens in this area to continue to the sell. So we're just looking for the lower time frame entry and follow our plan and our strategy. Very nice indeed. These are good signs. I'm not going to go too into the nitty gritty of it, but for those of you that are in Falcon that will understand what's happening here, th this is really good signs, especially from there as well. Did anybody take CAD yet, by the way? Anybody in it? Didn't have dollar CAD on watch this week. Took a break even on pound CAD. Nice. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, so we'll be looking for that. So top three guys, for those of you that are wondering, top three pairs, pound dollar, pound yen, and cad yen. Without a shadow of a doubt, I think will give us a tremendous amount of opportunity to be able to profit on. So trade it sensibly and make sure that you have a strategy and plan to know how to how, how to deal with it. So whether you scale into it, you know, stick to a risk management model as well, it's important. Pound cad. Let's have a quick look at pound cad so for those of you that would have taken pound cad so i would have gone in around this area and it just would have ended up with a break even you know short term it would have sold off and eventually gone back so for those you take it as more of a an entry around here you may have walked away with a small bit of profit but it is what it is kiwi yen again another yen pair like as far as just to add, this is what I mean. I could go on and on and on. This is why I can't wait to get into the live webinar as we break down the real nitty gritty. I think there's going to be a massive shift now because it's just much more likely the path of the least resistance is here. Even just stripping all that back. That's what we can see that break there and then the obvious big rejection. We're looking for this. So it's a nice little bonus to add to what I've just showed you as well, guys. From the outside in, we at Falcon will be looking for these moves. Dollar CAD looking for this break so you remember what i was talking about about people caught on the wrong side this is what i meant by it now sometimes you can get trapped into this element of trying to catch a falling knife looking for reversals which is why we wait for commitment anyway you know and sometimes we'll take a break even a small bit of profit maybe a small loss before something commits but eventually these these patterns commit they consistently have done nothing's changed so I'll be looking at this, be holding this over the weekend, letting it do its thing. It's got a strong close, and then we'll see how that plays out. One hour there. Yeah, we, we've got we've got some room to go, which is decent. So we'll see how that plays out until we get a nice shift back in to this area and then follow a pattern in here and then take that. We'll see if it just turns out to be a short term trade, then, you know, so be it. We'll move on and we'll look for the next one. So that is it for dollar CAD. The only other few things on the charts before I just get into the mindset tip, guys, because I, I could go on and on. I'm obsessed with this stuff. Right, so Kiwi Dollar. Keep your eyes peeled for Kiwi Dollar as well. The weekly on Kiwi Dollar. Lovely. Right, even if, if it's just a short-term play. Kind of price action that we're seeing there that we saw on the daily, even from a swing perspective. For those of you that took that, that sell-off there, be aware of that area. But I think we're going to break that low before we develop into a bit of a deeper pattern. But you've still got some room on the lower time frames to look to take that to the downside, which is decent. So we'll see how that plays out. So a nice little bonus there on Kiwi Dollar. Aussie Yen as well. So Aussie Yen, there was a bit of a line in the sand for us where you don't want to keep chasing Aussie Yen. And I think what's happened with Aussie Yen now is this here was a complete force breaker. So we've been looking for a sell-off on Aussie Yen because of the extension of what's happening here. But we didn't want to chase it, which is why you leave it alone, let it do its thing until it provides a shift. Well, that weekly, if we can close anywhere near like that, well, then there's the shift there, right? Daily looking solid. And then we're looking for looking for more continuation, especially after we break this phase line to the down. Yeah, this is going to be solid. So some sales on Aussie Yen and then a nice little bonus for you guys with Euro Kiwi will likely be on watch next week. 
There we go. Right, again, just looking to break. So we've completely washed everybody out at, at this point. Completely washed everybody out. And I would be very surprised if we don't take a shift to the upside. Daily chart. Now there's the commitment. So all we're looking for now, guys, lower time frame, and then we go. So then have a strategy in place. So nice little bonuses there as well. We'll see how that plays out. But that is it in terms of the currency pairs. Like I said, you know, we've got the top three, but we've almost got another three. So there's like six there for you. There's the direction. That's what I think is the strongest, most likely direction they go in. Do they all have to play out? No, they don't. You know, you just have to take it as they come. But the market's showing us very, very strong signs right now. So that will be our focus. But moving just swiftly on to one quick thing, right? So mindset tip and chapter. So let me know for all of you that, are, you know, I'm sure a lot of you are avid readers. Who's read Who's read this book, as I said at the beginning? Right, who's read that book? The War of Art. Be curious to see. Filtering this weekend is going to be a challenge. Top 14 instead of top 6. 100%. <laughs> it's literally mind-blowing the amount of opportunities that we have on there right now. I completely agree. But I'm looking forward to it, that's for sure. <laughs> Just going to have everything on watch. I know, we're going to have like, so many things on watch. But the war of art, right? So the war of art. So to briefly get into it. So for those of you that have it, whether you have a downloadable copy, e-copy, or you've got the physical copy itself, incredible book, you know, on procrastination and resistance. It's one that you'll love. It's a really easy read as well. So on page 80, he talks about professional accepts no excuses. And this is a thing that I wanted to briefly talk about. A professional accept, accepts no excuses. So why is that important? Well, what you'll realize is that most of the things that you need to do come from the level of extreme ownership that you've taken. But a professional trader, professional person accepts no excuses for themselves. So what I mean by that, let's say you're a trader, you have a checklist and that checklist, you follow that because that's your trading checklist of how you take positions. A professional will accept no excuses but to follow that. An amateur will just always flirt with, well, maybe I don't need to really stick to my rules that much. I can I can bend the rules a little bit and I can do this. A professional always follows that and doesn't accept any excuses. So what I want you to think about is from your trading routine all the way down to how you forecast, how you learn content, how you fill your positions out. Where do you take your trades? Do you always take them on your phone or do you take them on the laptop? Right, are you taking them in the app or are you taking them on the desktop? Right granular down to these areas. Remember, a professional accepts no excuses from themselves. So whatever you need to do that's gonna assist you in this game for the long run, make sure you do it and don't allow yourself to give yourself excuses as to, oh, it's a little bit early, you know, I feel tired. I feel really, really tired, so I'm not going to get up and do my typical routine that's going to set me up for success. And the reason why that's dangerous is be it becomes a slippery slope. It becomes a slippery slope to the point that you do it once, then you do it again and again, and then you've missed three key elements of your week that you've just completely gone out of whack because why? You lack discipline and you're accepting excuses. So I want you to go into rest of you know, next week, going into next month, more importantly, is accepting no excuses from yourself and fully focusing on what you need to do to get done. So that is the mindset tip of the month. I hope you take it really serious because if you really understand how important it is, you'll just grow so much more and you'll just have ultimate accountability. But that is it for the mindset tip, guys. February has been a regulation battle in the top six. I was going through flagging pairs to analyze over the weekend, pretty much all flagged. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's, a cra it's a crazy time in the market right now, but it's good. You know, you wait for momentum and once the market presents itself, depending on how you trade, you capitalize on it. The great thing is we can capitalize short term, medium, long term. This is actually a question we get a lot from the outside in. Can I tra trade ta Falcon if I, you know, trade short term? Of course you can. It's, inc it's completely up to you. Whether you trade long term, medium term or short term, you can capitalize on it. The great flexibility is being able to trade a style that fits your personality. Now, the good news is at Falcon that we cater for all types of personality. You just need to find what fits for you because that's what's actually going to help you for, for years to come, which is the most important thing, right? Why would you do anything else without longer term in place, you know, in mind? Very, very important. So, of course, you can trade short term, medium, longer term. And 
what I also want you to think about, which I think will arguably be one of the biggest things that helps you in your trading career, which is more so for the psychology. Flow, getting in that flow state. Who here has a way to get into the flow state? Or who remembers and recalls? I'm sure you all resonate with this, where you just feel like you're in the zone. You know, your mind's in the right place. Everything seems to be going well. Forget about trading just now, not just trading alone. But how about other areas of your life where you just feel like you're in the flow? Everything seems to be going well. Can you recall any of those days and, and what you do? Can you recall anything? Uh, if you can, start reverse engineering that and writing that down. I don't care if it takes you two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, two months. Like You need to know your psychology on point. And your goal as a trader is to get in that flow state as much as possible. What I like to call the flow zone. You need to get in the flow zone as much as possible. Because think about it, 365 days a year, how many days you're in the flow zone will determine your level of success. Because remember, when you're in the zone, great things happen. You follow your plan, you know, you remove distractions, you're not bothered about any gossip, you're just focused on you. So your goal as a human being is to be in that flow zone as much as possible, as frequently as possible. Now, there's no way on earth you're going to do that 365. However, if you're in the flow zone 10 times a year, well, chances are you're not getting any productive work going that's going to help you succeed in trading or in life in general. So imagine that you can now tap into that, tap into that on demand, 50 days a year, 100 days a year, 200 days a year. How much more success would you have in trading? I want you to start to ponder that thought and start to think about what can you do right now that's going to get you in the zone? Meditating for 10 minutes, alpha brainwaves, writing down your goals, doing 10 minutes of visualization, practicing five minutes of gratitude, whatever it is, make a custom tailor-made flow zone list for you. What is going to get you in the zone? Because it, it's you. No one's going to trade your capital for you, but you. So start thinking about what gets you in the flow. That's what's going to help you. Hundred percent. Really been trading in the zone in Feb. Love that mark. That's awesome. I feel so much in the flow, and there's there's a few things that I do to get me into the flow. Now remember, there's so many senses that you can get involved when you talk about flow state. Who remembers a smell that you'll recall your whole childhood to? Who resonates that where you smell something and it just reminds you of something like? 10 years ago or when you was five years old. That is how powerful your senses are. See, your flow is determined on that. That's how powerful your flow state can be. When you put these things in place, that's going to help you get in the zone. So really, really think about it. Take your time with it. Like I said, it doesn't matter if it takes you a week, two weeks, three weeks, two months. It is imperative that you're in the zone. And I'll, I'll leave you with this one story right before we just have a quick, quick look over the charts again. We had a trader, right, was very, very good, done very well, you know, applied himself very well and got to the point that they were consistently profitable for about seven months, right? And this is not the first person to do that. You know, I've, I've I counted this many times, but most people think that their biggest hurdle is succeeding. It's like, right, all I want to do is be consistent. That's what I want to achieve. Once I've achieved consistency, I'm done, I'm finished, perfect. Well, if that would be true, why is it that people that are doing well also give up? You might be thinking, what do you mean, Mark? Why would someone give up if they're doing well? You know, I, I kind of shrug my shoulders the same way. However, it's normally deeply rooted to psychology, which is why we're so passionate about it. Whether you're trading our style or not, I want to help you guys with psychology because it is holding you back. So we had many of traders, but one sticks out into mind, consistently profitable for about six, seven months, and then decides to almost give up, just throws, it, throws in the towel. And then I just sat there and thought, what do you mean? Why are you giving up? You've won. You've won. The very thing that you're struggling to do that some people struggle to become consistent, you've actually achieved. Why would you give up now? And the common common pattern was, oh, I have this doubt. I, I don't believe that it's going to last or I feel like this is just a fluke or this is just a winning streak and it's going to come to an end. So can you see how that even when someone was doing well, the fear of success, because there's responsibility attached to success, and there's not normally as much responsibility attached to losing because you can lose in the background. No one cares. No one knows about it. Now, when you win, you're in the spotlight. Your family, your peers, your friends, your father, your mother, you know, they, they expect something of you now. They expect you to perform because you're doing well. 
And sometimes the fear of success can hold people back, which is deeply linked to low self-esteem. Like I've been saying, lots of different avenues that we want to dive deep into, get to the root of it and rip it out. Because if that isn't a big enough wake-up call to you guys that you need to sort your psychology out, is that you can actually win in this game and still give up because your mind's not in the right place. And you might think, well, I couldn't imagine myself being there. Well, wait until that you actually have the responsibility. And now you're in a position where someone says, well, look, I can, I can offer you 100K now. I can offer you 250K, 500,000 pounds. Now, how are you going to respond where your self-esteem is so low and you don't actually ever believe that it's possible in the first place? This is why you need to work on your psychology. Your mindset needs to scale before your account does. That's what I mean by that. Because even people that win in this game still find a way to mess it up with self-sabotage. So I'd rather help as many people with that as possible, whether you trade our style or not. This is why when we started developing the psychology course, we was going to keep this strictly for Falcon. But as, as a duty to the rest of the to the rest of the trading space i want to be able to help now a lot of our stuff will be tailored to of course how we trade but psychology is psychology if you don't have your psychology in place then you're shooting yourself in the foot you're, you're missing such a key ingredient that's going to help you forever so i'm excited to get into that but i've just given you a great insight into the flow zone side of things which is something i discovered very many years ago unconsciously i would i would do it without even realizing and when I reverse engineer and I kind of look back and think, right, what actually helped me the most? What helps me right now? I'm just in the flow as frequent as possible. Not every day, but I'm in the flow so much and that helps tremendously. <laughs> Soak my hands in petrol before I jump in the charts. I don't doubt that. <laughs> Does anybody do anything just in particular, actually? just open for the q a right now does anybody do anything in particular to, to get them in the zone sniff some daisies jumping jacks could be anything 100 percent. that's why i'll be keeping monetary results to myself and not telling family girlfriend etc until i get funded in the future nice one spot on henry sometimes you do have to keep things close for that reason because otherwise there becomes a tremendous amount of responsibility after that and not everybody can cope with that and there's, there's nothing wrong with that that doesn't that doesn't mean that's not a downer or a dampener on anyone's character but why put more pressure on yourself when you just don't need to what what is the point right meditate before forecasting nice that's going to assist a lot spray the same after sh aftershave every time i sit on the charts a powerful anchor that's for sure epic epic well guys i really i really really hope <laughs> listen to drake that's that's a, that's a solid one we'll, we'll get that on the list let me know in the comments after this what you do to get in the flow zone I would, I would i would actually like to know but like in all serious no messing around just write something in detail what would you do what do you think helps you get in the zone and i'm going to go through there and just pick some comments out and and help where i can you know because you might be doing something that i could recommend a little tweak that might help you out whether it be your meditation, how you're meditating, what you're doing, that this this side of things fascinates me so much because you literally see it. There's so many people that I see that have such potential to succeed in this game. And sometimes it's their psychology. They think it's their technicals that's holding them back. But self-sabotage kicks in because they've just not dealt with things like self-esteem, which is why with what we're going to be scaling up this year for our students, we want to make sure psychology is just on point and, and i'm so grateful i've got an incredible team to to roll this out you know even my, myself and the coaches from a trading perspective like we we've dissected so much and i have incredible coaches so myself nil and benny we're going to really push this year to help people as much as possible so it's going to be a fantastic year and we're literally right what two months in q1 is already over right it's already nearly over you've got one month left for q1 so if you think about it like that it's a great reminder that time waits for no one. It goes so far. So what are you going to do now over the next 30 days? How are you going to get in the flow? And how are you going to get the most out of Q1? You can look back at Q1 and not always measure it on just on results, but just how well are you performing as a person? And how is that assisting you towards your long-term trading goals? Have that front of mind and you'll always improve. <laughs> no, no petrol, no glue. Yeah, ideally no petrol or glue.
I'm glad it has. I'm glad that's improved since the videos. I hope you've been enjoying the content. Like as, as always, you know, we're we've got a lot in the works. One of the okay, the main series is going to be based around our students for those that want to be publicized. That is, and that's just really just to inspire as much as possible and see that kind of raw raw journey as much as we can. The next level onto that will be the documentaries where we can actually follow up on that and actually see that happening in person. That's what I'm really curious to do. Now with co, I won't say the C word, but you know, with all the, with all the stuff that's happening in the world right now, before I get the live taken down, uh, with all the stuff that's happening in the world right now, it won't be won't be easy to do. But you know, that's not going to stop us. We're going to find a way. So we're going to make that happen. But that to, that to us is the passion because at the end of the day, it, it's not just about right. This strategy yields this. This yields this. Falcon is so much more than that. It's so much bigger than that. We have a proper family of people that genuinely enjoy to see other people succeed. So being able to document that and meeting up in person, the meetups are going to be on fire. As soon as we can do those, you know, like last time we've already been to Australia, we've already been to Canada. So we, we already commit to going to the other side of the world. And what I really recall is that it, there's a different thing that like you can talk to someone online, but when you meet people in person, like South Africa is another one, right? But when you, when you meet people in person and you see the impact, you shake their hand, you see the expression on their face, that's a different feeling. That's a different feeling to know that what you're doing is genuinely, authentically changing people's lives that want to make it happen. So we're buzzing for that. Really, really can't wait. And we've got a studio. So the studio set up. So one of the videos you'll see very soon that will take you through the kind of tour of the, the studio. Lots of content coming to the channel. But let me know in the comments about seriously, though, what, what gets you in the zone? What gets you in that state of flow? You might help other people out that didn't even think about something. So your comments are welcomed. But guys, that is it for the live show. I appreciate you tuning in. Literally, it's almost an hour and I feel like it's just flown by. I appreciate everyone tuning in from all over the world that you investing your time and energy into the channel. It, you know, it doesn't go unnoticed and we're going to be pushing more to it. But as a last little glimpse, as what I was talking about there, for March, I honestly think that pound yen is going to provide us with lovely moves. Same for pound dollar, same for cad yen. Now, however, if you're in Falcon, you know what to do. For those of you that don't, or you're not, or you're trading a different system, whatever it is, there's going to be some seriously nice moves to capitalize on. So make sure that you've got your plan, you know what you're doing, you know how to manage it, you know what your risk is, you know how to execute. Don't just blindly jump into the charts. And then the few others as well that are highlighted just in case you've just jumped in a little bit late. Kiwi dollar, that's going to be lovely for a sell. I, I don't necessarily think this is a longer term sell just yet. We need a bit more, but that will be decent. Aussie yen will be the better play. So looking at Aussie yen again to continue, but we really need to break past this sort of phase line first. And then Euro Kiwi for the buys and currently in dollar cad long. So we'll see how that plays out. Guys, thank you so much for jumping into this. I hope you took a lot of value away from whether it be technical analysis, mindset, all these type of things that we've spoken about. And I look forward to seeing you in the next live. Enjoy your weekend wherever you are in the world. And I'll see you in the next episode, guys. Take care, everyone. See you guys. Looking for, for those of you that are in Falcon, honestly, the live webinar Monday night is going to be absolutely unreal. So I hope to see as many of you there as possible that you can make it to the live. It's going to it's going to be really really fun. But for the for the rest of you, really enjoy your weekend, and I hope you've taken value from these words, and you can actually start to implement that over the weekend. Start figuring out these things that's going to help you with your flow zone, and start custom making it to yourself because that's going to help you tremendously. Take care, guys. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you in the next one. See you, everyone.